Welcome to section 2. In this section we will be discussing, how to be prepared, to deal with emergencies. Occupational Health and Safety Act, General Safety Regulation, Section 3. First aid, emergency equipment, and procedures. An employer shall take all reasonable steps that are necessary under the circumstances, to ensure that persons at work receive prompt first aid treatment, in the case of injury or emergency. Where more than 10 employees are employed at a workplace, the employer of such employees, shall take steps to ensure that for every group of up to 50 employees at the workplace, or in the case of a shop or, an office as contemplated, in the Basic Conditions of Employment Act No. 3 of 1983, for every group of 100 employees, at least one person is readily available, during normal working hours, who is in possession of a valid certificate of competency, and first aid. An employer, shall at a workplace where high-risk substances, or toxic, corrosive or similar hazardous substances are used, handled, processed or manufactured, ensure that the first aid worker referred to in sub-regulation 4 is trained, in the first aid procedures that are necessary for the treatment of injuries, that may result from such activities, including the acute detrimental effects, of exposure to such substances, and in the emergency procedures, which are necessary in the case of accidental leakage, or dumping of such substances. An employer, shall affix a prominent notice, or sign, in a conspicuous place at a workplace, indicating where the first aid box or boxes are kept, as well as the name of the person in charge of such first aid box or boxes. First aid kit. A list of items that are the minimum contents required in a first aid box or kit, were published in terms of the Government Gazette, 14192 dated August 7, 1992. These are the only items to be kept in your first aid boxes. No medication is allowed in first aid kits in the workplace. These items are for emergency purposes only, and should be issued either by the departmental first aider, or the department head. Please note, that a spillage kit, had been added to the content of the first aid box. When one of the items has been used, ensure that the form is completed stating, date and purpose of use, and ensure that it is replenished immediately. Equipment. We have now explained the different types of bandages, that are appropriate for the first aider, but this is not all. There is other equipment that you should know about, in order to treat a casualty at your workplace. Firstly, you need to consider your safety, and act of any danger in the surrounding area. If everything is safe, use first aid. If needed get someone to call for an ambulance. First aid can be anything from dressing a small wound, controlling bleeding in larger wounds, or providing cardiopulmonary resuscitation also known as CPR. We will discuss the CPR process. When the first aider uses the mouthpiece, he or she will then do CPR. Whenever a casualty occurs in the workplace, certain equipment should be used to assist the injured person. Equipment for casualties may include stretchers, spinal boards, blankets, splints, and thermometers. It is important to understand that the first aider is not a medical practitioner, or a paramedic and therefore should not move any injured person. The first thing a first aider should do is, to ask someone to contact the emergency medical services first. The first aider can support the emergency team, once they arrive with especially important information, and must be written down. The emergency medical team, may require information from you, and must therefore be prepared. Instruments. Adhesive tape, hypoallergenic. Trauma shears, for cutting clothing in general use. Tweezers. Irrigation syringe, for cleaning wounds. Rubber suction bulb, for clearing the airway of an unconscious patient. Disposable gloves. Disposable gloves should be provided in a first aid kit, and must always be worn. Torch. A torch is a useful addition to a first aid kit, especially one placed in a vehicle. Stretcher. Stretchers are support beds, which are durable, stain, and water-resistant vinyl-coated nylon fabric, which is easy to clean. Black handle grips for secure lifting. This stretcher is ideal for any first aid room. Stretchers are available in single and double fold models. It has a reusable lightweight aluminium pole feature, with two heavy duty tubular aluminium poles, with two cross spreader bars. Splints. The splint must fit the shape of the injured arm or leg properly to provide the best possible support to the injured person. Sometimes, it may be necessary to replace a splint as swelling decreases and the splint gets too big. Repeatedly as a fracture heals, a splint may be applied again, to allow easy removal for therapy. A SAM splint is a versatile splint made of malleable aluminium covered with foam. Air splints are easy to apply, can also help control bleeding, but bulkier and more expensive. 
Wire ladder splint. Spinal board. The full polyethylene spinal backboard is designed for the safe immobilization of victims by emergency responders. The spinal board is a one-piece shape constructed from high-density polyethylene. It is durable, impact and weather resistant. There are several handles and holes for easy lifting and application of straps. Blankets This multi-purpose first aid blanket is ideal for stretchers and beds. The blanket keeps the victim warm, whether at the scene of an accident or in a first aid room. A space blanket is a lightweight plastic foil blanket, sometimes called an emergency blanket. Thermometer. The thermometer is a device that measures temperature. A thermometer has two important elements. They are the temperature sensor for example, the bulb on a mercury thermometer, in which some physical change occurs with temperature, and converting this physical change into a value, for example, the scale on a mercury thermometer. Other equipment. I cup or small plastic cup. Instant acting chemical cold packs. Sterile eye wash, commonly saline. Sterile saline may also be used for cleaning wounds, where clean tap water is not available. Swabs that are sterile non-woven. Hand sanitizer or antiseptic hand wipes. A pen light. Alcohol pads should not be used on open cuts or wounds, since they cause tissue damage and delay healing. They can be used to prep unbroken skin for injections etc or to disinfect equipment such as thermometers. While not a medical use, alcohol pads are also useful as a solvent to remove ink, adhesives, etc. Antiseptic ointment or spray. Calamine lotion. Aloe vera gel, used for a wide variety of skin problems, including burns, sunburns, itching, and dry skin. Burn gel a water-based gel that acts as a cooling agent, and often includes an antiseptic such as tea tree oil. Epinephrine auto-injector known by its brand name the EpiPen. Often included in kits for wilderness use, and in places like summer camps, to treat anaphylactic shock. Requires a prescription, and can be used with minimal training. Poison treatments. Activated charcoal, to be used when directed by poison control. Under no circumstances, are you allowed to hand out any form of pills. Leave this for the medical practitioner. You do not know the person's medical background, and if you supply the injured person with tablets, and the person is allergic to the tablets, you will be held liable. Improvised uses. Many first aid items can have improvised uses in a survival situation. For example, alcohol pads and petroleum jelly-based ointments can be used as a fire starting aid in an emergency, and the latter can even be used as an improvised lubricant, for certain mechanical devices, and adhesive tapes and bandages can be used for repairs. These alternate uses can be an important consideration when picking items for a kit that may be used in wilderness or survival situations. Temporally substitutes for first aid equipment include For hand protection plastic bags can be used. For wound dressings clean cloth, handkerchiefs, sanitary pads, disposable nappies, napkins, and towels can be used. For cervical stabilization rolled towels or sandbags on both sides of the neck can be used. For bandages strips of material, socks, ties, scarves, and shoelaces can be used. For supporting material pillows, blankets, towels, and clothing can be used. For splints carton box, mesh wire, and wooden planks well padded can be used. To improvise slings, ties, ropes, belts, and scarves can be used. Universal precautions. Universal precautions refer to the practice of avoiding contact with patients' bodily fluids by means of the wearing of non-porous articles such as gloves, goggles, and face shields. Universal precautions are called so because they must be taken by every person and pertain to all body fluids, as it is not possible to know who has HIV or any other diseases carried in body fluids, especially in blood. Follow these steps when dealing with injuries and wounds. Every organization, must have a first aid kit as laid down by legislation. No one should have direct contact with another person's blood or body fluids. Use gloves, plastic shopping bags. Stop the bleeding as quickly as possible. Apply pressure directly over the area with the nearest available cloth or towel. Clean wounds. Use antiseptic and keep all wounds, sores, grazes, or any broken skin always covered. Manage accidental exposure to another person's blood or exposure during injury by cleaning skin with running, or clean water and then cleaning it with antiseptic, or diluted household bleach. Clean contaminated surfaces and materials. Surfaces, floors, etc. must be cleaned with diluted bleach. 
bloody bandages and cloths should be sealed in a plastic bag and burnt, instruments and equipment washed, soaked in bleach, and dried. Disposal of sanitary towels and tampons. All female staff and learners must be informed about proper arrangements for disposal of these items so that no other person has contact with them. Medical instruments, especially scalpels and hypodermic needles should be handled carefully and disposed of properly in a sharps container. Additional precautionary methods. Hand washing with soap and water. Wherever possible, use gloves or something similar to protect your hands. Wash hands, even after using gloves. Be particularly careful about washing your hands where you have not used gloves, or some other form of protection. Diluted bleach, or mentholated spirits can be used in addition to soap and water. If hands are dried with a reusable towel, it should be washed regularly. Gloves. Gloves should be worn during all procedures, involving blood or other potentially infected body fluids. Gloves are not necessary, however, when the amount of blood is small enough to be contained in a swab, for example, in the case of an injection site. If gloves are in short supply, priority should be given to procedures involving contact with blood. Gloves should be discarded, after each use on a single individual. Heavy-duty gloves should be worn, when sharp objects and potentially contaminated materials are taken for disposal. Hands should be routinely washed with soap and water, after removing gloves, in case of tiny tears in the material. Protective clothing or equipment. Protective clothing, such as waterproof gowns, aprons, masks, and eye shields need to be worn where there is likely to be exposure to large amounts of blood. Protective equipment, such as CPR masks, need to be used when resuscitating people who have stopped breathing. Safe handling of sharps. It is through accidentally puncturing the skin with a sharp implement, such as a needle or scalpel, that you are most likely to expose yourself to HIV infection in emergency settings. All sharp objects should be handled extremely carefully. They should never be passed directly from one person to another, and their use should be kept to a minimum. You should never try to bend or break needles, nor attempt to recap needles in their sheaths, as this is often associated with accidental puncturing of the skin. When needles are responsible for such injuries they are often referred to as needle stick injuries. Puncture-resistant containers for the disposal of sharps must be made readily available, and should be kept close at hand. Sharps should always be kept out of reach of children. Sharps should never be thrown into ordinary waste bins or bags. Disposal of waste materials. People, including small children, often scavenge in rubbish dumps, so the safe disposal of waste materials and sharps is vitally important. All contaminated items are regarded as medical waste. Medical waste is disposed of in dedicated medical waste containers. Containers must be clearly marked. Use red bin liners. Separate medical waste from municipal waste. Do not overfill the bins. Do not tamper with the contents. Always wear PPE when handling medical waste. Medical waste containers have to be removed by companies dealing with or handling medical waste bins. Close the bin liners properly to avoid leakage or secondary contamination. Do not burn waste bins. Medical waste only. Cleaning and disinfecting of equipment. Cleaning of medical instruments between patients is essential. Special attention must be paid to equipment that is contaminated with body fluids. HIV can be killed through boiling, or the use of chemical disinfectants. Non-reusable equipment, such as disposable needles and syringes should not be reused. Reusable equipment should first be dismantled, and cleaned and then boiled for at least 20 minutes. For those instruments that are heat-sensitive, the following agents may be used. Chlorine-based agents for example, household bleach. 2% glutaraldehyde. Or 70% ethyl and isopropyl alcohol. Protective clothing may include, but is not limited to, barrier gowns, gloves, eyewear including goggles or glasses, face shields, hair nets, shoe coverings. As a first aider you will use personal protective devices when you treat a casualty. For the purpose of this learner guide, we will discuss mouthpieces and surgical gloves. Sterile mouthpieces for first aiders. There are various mouthpieces on the market, but first aiders must use mouthpieces that are sterile to protect themselves when rendering first aid. HIV can be transmitted by blood, blood products, semen, vaginal secretions, and possibly other bodily fluids containing visible blood. A first aider can be infected with different diseases and is therefore crucial to use disposable mouthpieces. A first aid CPR pocket mask. A first aid CPR pocket mask comes in a plastic case. 
Protect yourself when administering CPR, and avoid painful actual mouth-to-mouth situations. Ask your employer, to provide you with the equipment, that will assist you when you must do CPR. You never know on who you might have to perform, mouth-to-mouth resuscitation. There are certain procedures you should follow when doing CPR, with your mouthpiece. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation known as CPR, is a procedure to support and maintain breathing and circulation, for a person who has stopped breathing, known as respiratory arrest, and or whose heart has stopped, known as cardiac arrest. The pocket mask, is a small device that can be carried on one's person. Air is administered to the patient, when the emergency responder exhales, through a one-way filter valve. Surgical gloves. It is important for first aiders to use sterilized hand gloves when touching the injured person because it eliminates the risk of getting infected, especially when there are fluids present, such as blood, vomit, etc. The basic principles of hygiene. Use a clean pair of gloves per patient to prevent cross-contamination. Work as cleanly as possible as permitted under circumstances. Do not let dressings or gloves lie around and contaminate an emergency scene. Wash your hands immediately, after rendering first aid. I'm now going to demonstrate to you how to put your gloves on and how to remove them. First of all, put our gloves nicely on. Don't touch on the inside. Also, there our gloves are on. Now to remove them safely, Pinch the one glove in the middle of the palm of the hand and remove him safely. Place it nicely in the other glove. Put your one finger underneath and you can throw them away. If you want to be very nice, you can tie it off. And discard it to your medical waistband.